Reporting in from Norwest Con with my good buddy Dennis Sar. I can't throw the R's. Upkins. <laughs> now, uh, I was just talking with them before because you were here invited here as a guest, correct? Yes, I was a, a panelist here last year and then they invited me back and I was happy to come back. I love Seattle and I love the convention, so it, it was fun. It's, it's a vacation for me. <laughs> so, as we were talking about earlier, I asked you, how do you get invited to these conventions? Is it part, uh, partly uh, you seek them out or they seek you out? A uh, little bit of both. Um, a lot of times it's just networking and who you know and, and sometimes you just get opportunities presented. Um, I was at another convention uh, late last year and someone there wanted, uh, who worked at a library, they were doing a library convention, they wanted to get local artists, uh, authors together. So I was invited to that. Um, I was invited to this one because one of uh, head cre uh, one of the people in charge, she knew me online. She knew about my book Holliston when it came out. She knew I my work in social justice online and in real life. And she asked me if I wanted to be uh, come as a guest, and I was just honored to do so. So a lot of it's just um, I've sought some people out, and some of it some people have sought me out. So it's a lot of networking, a lot of hustle, and then as your name builds and grows, you network and. You, opportunities get presented and you uh, find opportunities so it's a little bit of both mm -hmm. so and when you come to these conventions what is your number one goal like you must have a couple of different goals but what takes priority over everything else um it really just depends on which um, it really depends on which type of convention I'm going to for Norwescon which has a very progressive um, social justice themed um, con and science fiction, I guess just the best thing to do is just like try to be a good ambassador and just, you know, keep your um, focus on discussing issues and, you know, just, you know, just trying to handle those with care. Uh, honestly, it's really, it's just when I'm here, it's just, you know, just when I'm on panels, just being professional, just being nice, you know, being gracious with fans. Um, old and new and just getting to meet people so it's really just you know be a good ambassador especially when it's uh, you're dealing with issues and things like that you know when you're discussing them you want to be a good representative of when I'm discussing P um, anti-racism or if I'm discussing issues of LGBTQs um, you just want to be a, a good uh, representative and just make sure you're practicing what you preach so those are things I just have on uh, my mind and also yeah okay promote my work and you know make money too but just I, I don't know I just I guess there's uh, different things but I really just don't even think about it really it's just you know just put your best foot forward and just be professional and just show I guess if I had to pick it's just show every that you are happy and appreciative of this opportunity that you were presenting because I did not have to be invited and that does not mean they have to invite me back. So I'm always humbled and always thankful for that. Now, me and you, uh, we both like different things, uh, and yet we're also both not highly active in fandoms for various reasons. Like we were, we were actually talking. Uh, we yeah, uh, we were actually talking. We were actually talking earlier about how much do we actually allow into our system? How much good? How much bad? Particularly the bad. Uh, how do you how do you feel that that affects you as a writer? Because well, I know for myself, I'm writing my own superhero series because I see stuff I see wrong, and I want to well correct. I'm finger quoting without anyone seeing me here. How and you dealt into uh, young adult novels, and do you feel that you do the same thing? Uh, like, do you feel that you you want to, either want to, or have to correct the faults you see in certain genres? Well, um, I don't think I can single-handedly correct, I, I don't ever go into the mindset of, I'm going to correct everything that's wrong in YA or any other genre, and I think when you go into that, with that mindset, you get in trouble. However, I, some of the stories I have um, written or have been inspired, uh, I have written or have been inspired about, we picked the perfect spot, apparently. Right under the stairs. Right, right under the stairs, right here. I'm not catching anyone. Nope. Um, 
uh, some of the stories I've been inspired by was I might take minorities because unfortunately we either aren't represented well or when we are it's poorly done and some of it is clueless to downright just blatantly racist or homophobic or sexist or what have you so I usually my stories of one I want to tell a good story but I also want to represent marginalized people who don't get uh, who don't get um, a spotlight shined on them who aren't a uh, showcase and I want to tell uh, tell their stories and be able to you know ha let them have adventures and to challenge people's mindsets of you know the hero or the he the best person for the job isn't always the straight white guy. It can be a trans heroine. It can be a person of color. Um, it can be a gay male. It, you know, whomever. It can be someone with a disability. It's you know. So I keep that in mind. But um, a lot of times it's just inspired by you know what. I'm not happy with the stories that are out there, but that's not going to change unless you know I do my part to try to help change things. Hmm. Definitely, for sure. Uh uh, and as as you are writing about different minorities, do you find yourself, uh, well, how do I best put this, a lightning rod for both good and bad attention? Because I remember us talking about the uh, publicity surrounding Hollowstone. You received actually quite a fair, well, a fair number of uh, negative reviews on Amazon mm -hmm. from some rather vindictive people, I would mm -hmm. say. How do you how do you deal with that? Well. Um just to provide context for uh, those, basically la a couple of summers ago, I basically wrote an essay and I was basically just uh, discussing why, you know, gay men um, should not be used as like for pain porn or, you know, there are certain offensive things like we should not be getting raped in every story and just basically talked about some of the, also the racism that uh, goes with um, marginalized people too. Unfortunately, this caught the ire of several trolls, racist white trolls, and they went and started trolling me on Amazon and Goodreads and whatnot and just started attacking. Um, unfortunately, I knew going into this, being a black man, I knew I'm going to be attacked because when you're a black artist, and I've, unfortunately this is all, I'm not an isolated incident. I've heard of other artists, actors, who have gotten death threats, who have been attacked, who've been stalked, who've been harassed, just for daring to exist. Same for uh, many queer people too. If we don't tell straight whites, quote unquote, allies what they want to hear, we get attacked as well. Um, it's not fun, but you know going into this that, you know, when you're taking a stand and when you're challenging people, people don't like to be challenged, you know. Uh, the best analogy my mother gave was, or actually my parents, they stoned Jesus Christ. So, and he's supposed to be the guy without sin, and they crucified him. So, I can't walk on water or turn water into wine. So, I'm pretty much thinking if they were going to do that to him, <laughs> they're going to have a field day. But unfortunately, it... It comes with the territory. The only thing you can do is you set the record straight. You stand tall and fight the battles if you have to, but you know, you keep focused. And like I told those trolls then, I just basically say that the facts. They can lie, they can scheme, they can do whatever they want. Eventually, no one's gonna, they're gonna, people are gonna stop listening to them. I'm gonna continue to work hard. I'm gonna continue to get opportunities. I'm gonna make my opportunities. And at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be standing tall. And look what happened. Not only did I produce a great book, I've got another one coming out, and I'm still being invited to conventions and getting all uh, interviews like this one and getting other opportunities. So, at the end, look who came out prosperous. So, haters are gonna hate, but guess what? Revenge, uh, living well is the best revenge, so stay mad. And speaking of books, which you should also buy Hollow Stone on Amazon, if you can. Oh, wait, what's this? What is this? <gasps> Oh. On paperback. Yes, and mm -hmm. it's also in digital as well. Mm -hmm. That was where I got my first copy on Kindle. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you, know, you got Hollowstone and you've got two novellas coming out. Could you tell us a little bit about them? Um, right now, um, they are Keepers, um, A Phoenix Tale, and West of Sunset. Right now, we are in the works because what we may end up doing is combining the... Um, books right now everything is a little bit tentative right now so I don't want to go into too much detail but I'll, right now because everything is subject to change so just keep that in mind however I will also say that um, both stories do feature uh, Breck and Everett and I'm really excited to introduce the world to them 
Um, he's a young gay black uh, wizard detective who's in college and sort of done in the spirit of say a Harry Dresden or you know Joss Whedon's Angel. So action packed, a lot of comedy, a um, lot of surprise twists, and it's it's going to be a fun romp. And I think a lot of people are really going to have some fun with it. And so it's it's really cool to uh, really do that. And there's some other great characters in there too. Uh, Violet Peters, I'm really excited about introducing them to uh, the world to her as well, as well as the uh, the Phoenix Brothers, which are going to be a hoot also. All right, so you got two novellas coming out. You've got Hollowstone uh, came out. It's, uh, it's, uh, no small success, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, um, it's done really well, so which was shocking. So I'm really happy. Um, uh, Miriam and Kimberlyn, uh, hello ladies, uh, from Parker Publishing, they've been really good. They've been nothing but supportive, and I have nothing but wonderful things to say. I could not have found two finer ladies to work with, so it's been an honor and a pleasure. And I've really, you know, they brought me to the dance, and I'm really appreciative for the work they've done. So. Having some experience now in writing, editing, publishing, uh, what kind of advice uh, would you have given yourself if you started off? Or even, what are some of the basic advice that you feel uh, beginner authors should have? Um, you're going to get rejected. Um, sometimes it might be because your work is not at the level it should be. Sometimes it might be your work is at the level and it's just not a good fit for that particular market. I've, I've had rejections and I was told, hey, your book was great, your story was wonderful. Unfortunately, it's not really for our market, but it's a really good one and I have no doubt it'll find a home. And for some of my work, that was the case. Um, in other cases, it was they uh, had something similar or they found something similar to it and they didn't buy it because they just bought something very similar to that. Uh, so, oh, hey guys. Hi. Hi. Uh, Tilt cam. <laughs> yeah, so it really just varies. The, um, you're fine. Thank you. Um, so uh, the one thing I will say, though, uh, is I was actually speaking with my good friend Sherry Priest. And before hey, Sherry Priest. Sherry Priest. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> Sorry, I am a huge Mark Sherry Priest. I love your books. Ganymede's awesome. I love it. Okay, go on. Yes, Ganymede, Clementine. That's Anyway, um, I was talking to her and uh, Caitlin Kitteridge. We were actually having lunch when I was in, uh, visiting in Seattle a few years back. And, you know, and I was asking them for the advice and stuff. And they both said the one thing is those who make it are the ones who don't give up. And I really had to think on that and then it made sense. No matter how much rejection you get, if this is your passion, if this is what you want to do, just keep at it, just keep working, just keep submitting. Just keep honing your craft and keep honing your craft. You only have to find one market, and especially if you're writing a novel, you find that one book, you, your foot's in the door and you're already at the dance. So I guess it's like if this is what you want to do and you're willing to put in the work and the um, sacrifice, and it does take a lot of work, especially for a new author. It's not fun. But once you start making those connections, once you start networking, once you once lightning strikes and you're right there, you know, it's it's go time from there. So I would just say, do not give up, keep at it, keep working, keep working. It may not happen overnight, but eventually you will get there. Interesting side note, Perry Moore, in his work to get Hero published, he kept every rejection letter he got. And he posted them all up on his wall. And considering that these are actual physical letters, uh, apparently he had one whole wall in his house <laughs> covered in them. <laughs> all right, now, how can we find you, Mr. Upkins? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, DennisUpkins.com, uh, you can find me, that's my official website, and you um, usually can find me there. ArsMarginal.wordpress.com. Jamie, you may have heard of that website. Yeah, I think I might have heard something about that. It's a pretty good website. Yeah, um, if you look up, look me up on uh, Facebook, I'm under Denny Upkins. Uh, you can find me there, and you can also find me on Twitter. It's Dr. Upkins. so it kind of almost looks like Dr. Upkins. Ironically, but no, Dr. Upkins on Twitter, and um, you can also find me there. Uh, hit me up, and yeah. So I'm usually around, but in most places, I'll show where else I'm connected. But um, those are the major spots where you can find me. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Mister. Yeah, I cannot roll the R. <laughs> cannot freaking roll the R. I'm Canadian. That's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Thank you again <laughs> for your time, Mister Upkins. And uh, this is uh, Triple J and Mr. Upkins signing off from NorwestCon.